What's up guys, Mustang Matt here. Today, I wanna to take a couple minutes to go over corn fuel, E85. Had a test for it, and what are the pros and cons of using it? So, let's start getting into it real quick. All right guys, so to test E85, you're gonna need, obviously, a test kit. Um, I got this one on Amazon. You can Google it and get them pretty much anywhere. Um, you're gonna need a little funnel for your empty water bottle that you will also need. So, let's get into it. All right guys, so the test kit is gonna have a water line. You fill it up with water to wherever it says um, this one happens to be right here. This is a pretty common test kit. I see these a lot of different places. So I fill it up at home and just leave it on my car. So you're gonna wanna put some of this into here. Just a little bit. You don't need very much at all. I probably put too much with just that little, that little bit. So, and then this you can take and just pour it into the this very easy. Um, the reason I use a water bottle is just because it's hard to go from the pump directly into the little test kit. So with this, you can watch your E85 line, which is up at the top here. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. It's a little bit loud out here, but you can very slowly pour it in there because it's gonna fill up really quick. All right, I actually had the perfect amount in here, pretty much, so now I'm at the line. What you're gonna wanna do is close it back off, shake it up, and wait a couple minutes. All right, guys, so a lot of places might say wait 10 or 15 minutes, but you really don't need to. Um, it's like a minute later, and it's already separating. It's already good enough to see. You, it's not gonna separate any more. I mean, it might separate more, but the level is not really going to change if you wait for it to separate anymore. So if you look at it, you can see the distinct difference between this and this. So see that line right there, the separation between the water and the alcohol. It's a hair over 85. It's like 87%. So that's what you want. Um, it can pretty much be anywhere in the 85% range, plus or minus 5%. It's not really gonna be a big deal if it's, you know, obviously a little bit over is even better, but a little bit under doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'm not gonna, being that there's water in here, I'm not gonna stick this into my gas tank, so I'll throw this into my car, discard it later on, and um, yeah. Okay guys, so how easy was that testing process, am I right? Now, why would you wanna use E85? What are the good things and the bad things about it? What are the pros and cons of using it? In your performance car so there's there's really two main benefits of it obviously the first is being more power um, you get more power due to more advanced timing in the engine um, e85 equals out to about 108 octane fuel so it can be compressed a lot more um, therefore you can advance the timing a lot more no engine the fuel in any cylinder in any engine doesn't explode when it's at maximum compression. There's there's always a little bit further that it could go, but the fuel doesn't have the ability to be compressed that far. So when you go from 93 octane to a fuel that is 108 octane, it can be compressed a lot more. Therefore, you can advance the timing a lot more, get a lot more power out of it. Um, a Gen 3 Mustang, which is what I have, Coyote, um, I gain about 30 to 40 horsepower using it. Uh, boosted cars gain a lot more. They can gain anywhere from like a hundred to I've seen I've heard, you know, quote unquote, I don't Know how accurate it is, but I've seen people gain almost 200 horsepower 150 170 horsepower on a boosted car just going by going from You know 93 octane pump gas to E85 So big big gains it runs cooler than gasoline. So it's it's even better for boosted cars The other big benefit is that it's a lot cheaper than gas so here um, it is 2.30 a gallon for E85 and it is 3.30 a gallon for 93 octane. Um, and I, you know, I just filled up with 12 gallons of gas. That's a $12 difference that over time is gonna add up. Now, the negative of it is that you're gonna get a lot worse gas mileage. You're gonna see about a 30 to 40% reduction in gas mileage. Um, in my car, Gen 3 Coyote manual, um, I don't have 10 gears and three overdrive gears, 
but um, in my car I went from about 23 24 miles to the gallon to about 14 on the E85 um, that's it used to say 330 miles to empty on gas and now on E85 it typically will say about 220 miles to empty so that is about exactly a 40 percent reduction um, pretty close to it um, it you know it sometimes says under if if you know especially after I went to PBIR and race um, obviously I'm being hard on the car it, it reads a little bit lower if I were to reset it just normal street driving it come back up a little bit now I did do the math on this and when gas prices have gone up a little bit since then E85 went up from 210 to 230 gas 93 went from like 3 to 330 or something like 290 to 330 something like that um, however I did do the math on it and I found out that price per mile is about exactly the same 85 versus 93 octane so is it really a con um, it's more of a con if you are just going on a trip or something you can't get e you know when you're driving long distances obviously it's it's very difficult so that's the con of the gas mileage thing now that is also another con that you can't find it everywhere if unless you live in a big area like i do um you know down in south florida it's very hard to find unless you live in a big city. Um, coming down here, it's it's very easy to find, so I can go a lot of different places and get it. I can drive pretty much anywhere in the county, find it, um, especially like Tri-County area. It's everywhere here. There's gas stations all over the place. But you start going north, you start going west, and you can't really find it as readily, readily available. So it's not something that you can really run 24-7. Um, so that is a pretty big downside and uh, there's a lot of people in the United States that can't run it because They can't get it in their area and another pro is that it is low emissions. So if you're Concerned about the new EPA stuff going around um, Not that it's you know within the law, but it is low emissions on the 85 um, If you're environmentally friendly, it's low emissions if you have a flex fuel vehicle like that comes from the factory flex fuel a hybrid something like that um, you can run it it's it's more environmentally friendly low emissions so that is another benefit of it so yeah that's about it um, if you're wondering should I run it if you live in an area like I do where you can go to a lot of different gas stations and find it you never really have to worry about getting too low and running out of gas you can find it at a gas station you know 10 or 15 minutes away from you at any you know place you're at then yeah absolutely it's it's great my car runs great on it um and like i was saying earlier if you're boosted especially because you will have to do some more mods you have to mod your fuel system and stuff at least i know for the mustangs that's the case if you're boosted um typically when you boost if you're on pump gas you can get away with just a boost a pump um however with e85 you're gonna have to upgrade your fuel system you're gonna need like a return style fuel system um, on the older coyotes you have to upgrade the fuel injectors um, Gen 1, you have to upgrade the fuel injectors to LU 47s, 47 pound injectors. The Gen 2, you can run stock injectors as long as you have a stock manifold. But a lot of people do 2018 or ported or, or boss or a combination ported, boss, ported 2018. A lot of people upgrade their manifold um, because they don't make as much power as the Gen 3s from the factory. So they upgrade the manifold um, as part of the full bolt on process. And then if at that point, you're going to need 47 pound injectors to run E. The Gen 3, you can run it. Any manifold stock injectors because of that port injection it's getting a lot more fuel a lot more fuel in there so it's ready to go for e from the factory as long as you're na but yeah absolutely run it um it's great it runs awesome it's like i said it's cooler for boosted engines safer higher compression um and yeah my car loves it so definitely give it a go if you can time to go home <laughs>